All right, today we got issues with our uh, touch keypad here, not uh, sending signals or telling the pin setter anything to do. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, show you. Shoot, you're not gonna be able to see them with the LCD. Maybe you'll see it there just slightly. If I can get you in the right position. See, it's just not being responsive. I'm pressing buttons. Nothing, it's not changing the power failure. Or, I can change power failure just by turning the other machine back on. Sorry. So it went back to score, but still, if this, if I shut this switch off, it's just not, nothing's happening either way. So I'm going to cut them back off. Alright, so now we're down on the inside. Uh, everything's still hot inside here. I'm not going to stick my hands in there yet. I want to show you some things. So you got the ribbon cable that comes up here. You want to make sure that that uh, ribbon cable right in the center there of the light that it's tied in well that it's uh, on all of its pins properly which this one already is uh, next thing you want to make sure uh, before you, this pad it is adhesive before I start touching on everything I'm going to go ahead and ground myself out working with these electronics all right um, the pad itself is adhesive on the back, so be careful if you try to take it off from the top and uh, like remove it, cut it with a knife, you'll probably damage it anyway. So make sure you already have a backup pad, a touch pad ready to be to install and use. Uh, before you just assume that that's what it is, uh, let, we'll test it with the one we have outside of the machine. Uh, I'm going to back you away just a little bit here, and I'm going to go ahead and power my machine down. Let me get you to where you can see everything a little better. I'm going to power the machine down using the lockout. Let it come down. Then I'm going to disconnect my main power from the source on the side here. Still, I'm still grounded out to the pin setter itself before I start handling all these electronics. Now I'm going to remove that ribbon cable from the upper panel from the next gen PCB. And you got to think about the orientation of the the new one you put in. Make sure you put the ribbon cable in right. Don't put it in upside down or nothing like that. I'm going to go ahead and install it because I'm going to test it outside of the next gen box before I try to cut it and remove it and waste time doing fixing the wrong thing. Alright, so I've pushed the pins in completely. I'm going to go ahead and plug it up, power it back up, uh, shut off the pin setters, and see if I can, using these buttons here, if I can cycle through everything now. Connecting the main power. Lockout back on. See everything's brought back up here on the top. I can get you in the right light again, so you can see the words. My grounding clip came undone, but I'm not touching anymore. Well, I'm gonna pause you. I'm gonna get my grounding clip set back up so I can touch that keypad. Alright, so we're set back up. I'm trying to get you in just the right light. Maybe you can see the LCD screen. There we go. Okay, uh, so uh, everything's powered back up. Um, I'm going to use the keypad on the inside. You won't be able to see me pressing the buttons. But we'll be at least able to see if uh, it cycles through the options. So it's on motor now. There you go. See, as I'm pressing the button, it's actually going through all the settings. So I'm going to assume that it's this keypad. It's time to switch the keypad out. I'm going to go ahead and power it back down with the lockout. Then I'm going to remove the main power, disconnect both of those cables. I'm going to take my Phillips screwdriver. I'm taking the four screws out of might as well show you. 
in the top here, uh, right there with screw number one I took out. I've got screw number two back here in the light to remove. Number three, trying to put it in the dead center of your screen. And number four, sorry about the light glare. I'm extracting all of those so I can take this upper metal plate off here and then I can use a razor knife and shave and get this keypad off and extract it. Since I know this keypad's got to go on the top, I'm just going to go ahead and remove it from the pins and get it out of my way so I can work easier. Always be cautious with your ribbon cable. I pulled from the terminal. I didn't pull the cable itself. I'm setting it back on some anti-static uh, plastic. Get my last screw out here. goodness it didn't fall all the way. Alright, so now I've got my metal protection plate off. Got the keypad up here. Uh, the keypad is bad already, so I got a uh, razor knife here. I'll if I can get it to catch. Brand new blade. I'm going to try and score underneath the surface of this and extract this pad. I just did a quick double check, just wanted to make sure that the, the uh, ribbon cable from the LCD screen, I wasn't going to interfere with it with the razor knife. Just don't want to damage more than I got to fix. All right. So there's the old bad one removed. I just had some buttons went out over time. I'm going to get a, another flat razor to clean this a little better, the surface. Uh, excuse me, I guess you could use some goof off or something to clean it, but I'm always concerned around these electronics, any drops or anything getting down in there while I'm cleaning it, so I'm going to use a razor blade and try and scrape most of that clean. Sorry. Just using a regular uh, straight razor, sharp razor. I'll show you first at least how dirty it was, so you know. Uh, hopefully that's clear. Yeah, it's pretty uh, gummed up across there. So you'll see the results just with using a razor and not with using any cleaners or solvents. Get to cooperate here with me.
getting pretty satisfied with the results. You can see there, a lot less gum, still got a little haze on it, but shouldn't interfere with that uh, 3M sticker. Go ahead and put my grounding cable back on before I start handling that board. I've got the new one here. Take a look at everything first. All right, I'm gonna go. I, I do think I'm gonna go ahead and peel this, the backing off first. I was de making the decision whether I wanted to feed it in first or not. I think I'm gonna take the backing off. If it work with me here. Isn't that nice? I noticed there's a, a little piece of adhesive back there behind the ribbon cable. I don't think I'm going to mess with that because I don't want to crimp those, ca those ribbons any. So I'm going to feed it right down on the inside. It's coming through. I need to climb up top because I want to look that I center this, key this keypad as well as I can over the LCD screen. All right, I haven't pressed it down and secured it yet because I'm going to put my protection plate over top of it. Make sure that all those keys line up before I just totally go, go home with it. All right, I'm satisfied with the way that looks, so I'm going to move my plate back out of the way. I'm going to press everything down. seal it. Maybe you don't have to press it too hard. You never know where you're going to have to remove this one again and it'll be a lot of cutting. Alright, so that's all secured. I'll just go ahead and reconnect the ribbon cable now on the inside. Not missing any terminals. cover plate back on, run my screws back in through the bottom, and uh, tell you what, before we do all that, we'll just power it up one more time, make sure with them secured in, that everything's still functioning properly. The main power is connected, now I'm turning on the emergency lockout. It's bringing up my version. Uh, as you can see, I'm in... Uh, Maybe as you can see, yeah, there we go. Come on, I'm in the AS90. I'll just get this keypad out of my way, just for now. Arrow down, 10 pin, score, switch diag, setup, pin light, everything's working on the keypad now. So I'm good, I'm just gonna reinstall the bracket, put the screws in through the bottom, put my cover plate back on, and that's everything on installing a new keypad. Should be good to go.